This you is... see what I mean, man? Do you see what I mean? That fight in episode two. <laughs> and it, as I was watching, I was saying to myself, you know, it's a good episode, but, uh, man, a lot of talking. It'd be nice if there's a little fighting or something. I last three minutes, shall be the fuck Do you up. see what I'm saying, man? <laughs> Do you see? Do you see? <laughs> well, here, well, we'll get to that in a second. I mean, that, that whole thing uh, deserves to be talked about, but, um, yeah, you know, let's, um, let's talk about this. First of all, um, I really love how the last episode ends with this big montage going on, and, you know, and he hears a kid crying, he's like, yeah, he pulls down the mask, let's go, and he ends up in a dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> that is not how I thought this episode was going to open. Yeah, I was like, like oh. all right, we're going to see some agent. Like, I thought it would dump into basically something, like, you would see at the end of this episode, where it's the big ass kick. <laughs> instead, yeah, after all of that, he just wakes up in a dumpster. And it's like, oh, well, I... Yes, he didn't save the kid, <laughs> you know, and of course he gets him later, but, uh, you know, the more and more I'm seeing this, uh, you know, at least with these first two episodes, I mean, that's truly a judge, but I'm sort of seeing the restrictions of a TV show because clearly, even in the first episode, yeah, there's one or two fight scenes, but there's not that many for a comic book the action show, uh... But kind of like an anime, they use it very smartly, like a really smart anime, even if it doesn't have a ton of money behind it in its budget, will do stuff, will get a really stylized shot, but you'll have like a close-up of the eyes or something like that, and you won't see the mouth moving because that costs money. So, But they'll do it very stylized, and that's sort of one thing with this show, it doesn't look like it has a ton of money, but with what they do, they use it in all the right spots, where they have... Obviously not a ton of lights, but they put in the right spot so you get some nice shadows. And It's not uh, even that they don't have a ton of lights. I just don't think they have a lot of sets that are that interesting. So stylistically, so, so they it's need like, to use well, the if we shoot yeah. in the dark, we don't have to worry about lighting half these sets. Um, and, uh, you know, and you just pick good actors to, to uh, make this stuff work. And then, yeah, when you do the fight scenes, uh, you just put so much into these sort of small snippets of fights but are so effectively done and clear i mean this episode is very little violence really until the end um well you, then the well nice i was gonna talk about the interrogation torture scene yeah <laughs> uh so you got um uh rosario dawson who's you know, I don't Wait, remember. I thought it was Rosie Perez. Oh, <laughs> shut the fuck up. When she came out, I said, is that Rosie Perez? I got the names mixed up. And I just kind of looked at Doug like, huh? No, they clearly, the actresses clearly had nothing in common. They're I know, I just thought it was funny. But, uh, no, I said, I said uh, Rosie Perez. But uh, they got Rosario Dawson, who I, you know, I haven't seen turn in, like, a bad performance ever, but I've never seen, like, a holy shit, that was, like, really fucking good performance and in this like even though it's not like you know the media's role i felt like she kind of made something of it you know when she's like look i want to get behind you i want to believe you but, but you're I, a, bit I of a weirdo some, yeah but you, you gotta give me some proof that you're worth following and when she said that, i'm like well, I, I really fucking believe her and i like she really the, wants to follow this person. i like the slippery slope that claire has of I don't know what to make of all this, and I don't want some guy dying on the on my carpet, and all of this, and then finally, I think it's the reveal of when he says, you know, where's the kid? Ah, the kid's already dead. <laughs> what are you gonna do with the kid? Ah, we just sell him like other. The more he talks, the more you can almost see the wheels in her brain turning, and she's like, all right, this guy really needs to go down. Like, well, and that's when she's like. Oh, Daredevil, the trigeminal nerve, the trigeminal. <laughs> I think there's a sense too that, like, I don't know. They, they didn't give away your backstory or anything. I don't recall, but you kind of get the feeling like she's been through some shit. Yeah, you I know. Don't, and um, when she sees like this guy, you know that maybe she's seen a bunch of these guys do this kind of stuff. You know, not handing it there where it's like, you know, okay, Dick, I'm gonna help out with it. Yeah, right here. I mean, there was this conversation I was having with a relative. Um, we were talking about that she might be night nurse, or one of the night nurses, um, which was a group of nurses who helped tend to superheroes. Hmm. Um, but the name's different. Like, there there were, like, I don't know, two or three of them or something. One of them was actually named Linda Carter, which is the only one I remember because I thought it was hilarious that she was uh. named Linda Carter. Um, but I, it, it's not Claire. Uh, what's it? Claire, Claire Temple. Temple. Uh, yeah, so, I, I don't know. I would have guessed it's actually Night Nurse. 
I don't know where they're going with this or if they're just screwing us around and they're like, no, it's going to be nightmares. Like, so, but that that's a possibility that I think is on the table. Um, well, and there's certainly some similarities, so. You have this back, uh, this back story that, again, I, because I saw the movie, I know what's going to happen to the father. I know how it's going to happen and all that stuff. But by God, I didn't want it to happen. I legitimately no, you're bought. you wrapped up. I le totally, even though I've seen it in a million movies before, I totally bought the relationship between him and his son, and it felt legit. And this episode, even though and not it's much, hard on, and I, we were talking about how we feel sorry for this kid actor because it's a tough, thankless role to constantly kind of be in the position. You're of, crying. You're screaming. You're crying. Hey, you're Dad. Screaming, everything's he, fine, Dad. Yeah, we're gonna be fine, Dad. Are we? Oh God, Dad. He does oh, it well. Like, he does and, and, it very but he well. he pulls it off, yeah, in such a way that I'm like, in a lesser movie, in the Daredevil movie, yeah. like, for instance, it doesn't work. But here, this kid and this actor playing uh, his father, really, like, I buy the camaraderie they have. And this will be, you'll find out later why this is so important, because it's going to juxtapose this with other characters. So. Well, and I'll say this, to the defense of the Daredevil movie, this has an entire episode to dedicate Yeah, no, to it has way more to uh, do with. But, but yeah, it's, but like what you were saying, I mean, we've seen this a million times, a million yeah. movies, you know, yeah, I'm gonna win that fight, you're gonna see, everything's gonna be fine, kid, gosh, Dad, it's gonna be great, oh, you're dead! I mean, we've seen this like a million times, but by God, like, you see him, when you see him going into the ring and getting ready to go, I'm just like, I, I don't want him to die. I do not want this guy to die. And well, I, when he turns and he hears them shouting his name and he closes his I eyes. I love that and, scene, yeah. And then interrupted by that gunshot. I mean, I was just well, like, really? Just when he like, enters no. the ring, the way it built it up with the music and he's got the sort of, the boxer sort of shawl yeah. over his head. It's almost like a holy moment. Like, yeah, this is like some he's sort an angel of going down mystical scene out of a cathedral. Like, you know, it... Oh, it's such a great scene. Yeah, no, it was very and the, effectively done. And I forget, like, in the Daredevil movie, he didn't cash out his money and leave it to his kid, right? No, no, not in the cut that we saw. I don't not, know what had to Yeah, like, like that, that makes a huge difference because it's a self-sacrifice. I mean, he's doing it for self-respect and to show his kid that he can win. Yeah, no, because that's what's asking. But, but like, it's more than that. More it's more like, like I think he, he knows he's going to there's a good chance he's not going to make it out of this if he does this. And so he's like, well, I have a so chance also to provide for my son. Yeah. yeah, I think he feels almost a sense of uselessness. Mm. Like, there's something to that character. And, of course, there's this whole Catholic sense of guilt and sacrifice. That was a great line, too. Oh, about uh, the, the one uh, of, uh, punishment and... Uh, Somebody who just constantly takes punishment without ever complaining. He's like, well, that last part's just being Catholic. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, there seems to be this sense of self-sacrifice and, like, finding use for yourself. And I always get the feeling that the father feels like he's not smart. He says he was never good at school. Mm -hmm. You know, his only way to provide is to kind of lose fights. Like, and I think he saw this as a way, like, I'm going to win back the self-respect of my son and provide for him for the rest of his life with this money. Yeah. So, um, um, well, and I, I think that gets to this episode, uh, particularly seems to get to what, I, what I'm seeing as the strength of this show, uh, which a lot of movies either don't do because they feel it's not important or don't do because they don't have time, uh, which it allows these moments for these characters just to be moments. That is the big advantage of TV is you can have time for this. And I'm thinking even like the... Uh, uh, Karen and uh, the Foggy just going out and getting drunk. That was great. I mean, it's like, but is it really? I want that <laughs> mythical eel drink. Yeah, right. <laughs> What's this eel shit? Um, but even then, it's like there's not a ton of exposition going on. It's just a lot of character building, and I legitimately like watching them. It you know, makes just me walk realize the town and you know sort of let off steam and stuff. And I like that you can get away with it much more in a TV show uh, than you can with a movie. It makes me realize, as much as I have enjoyed, I enjoyed the Avengers, I, the, the chunks of the Spider-Man films I enjoyed, Iron Man, and, you know, the big Marvel movies, and, of course, The Dark Knight, and uh, the original Batman and Supermans. I, it, I, th this may be a brave new world here, because I would actually much rather watch a thousand shows like this, taking a comic book and turning it into this, than I would probably going and seeing another comic book movie. Like, I'll go see comic book movies and I'll have a good time, but I'll be thinking of this. <laughs> like, I'll be well, thinking of, like, 
oh man, I wish it could all just be like a 13 episode series like Daredevil, because like, it really kind of nails it. Well, I'm not going to lie, and I think, I don't know if this is to its benefit, or I, mean, I think it's more to its benefit, but I don't even really see it as like a comic book show. I don't. I see it as this fascinating. Yeah. You know, I see it about a drama. You know what? As, as a drama about a vigilante. I will say this. It. I would say it's a comic book show, but much more along the lines of that difference between comic book and graphic novel. It is a graphic novel show, like and, and right down to the way it's shot and the use of color, and it looks like a gritty graphic novel. Yeah, like, like, uh, but that still is. Stuff. Like, in a way, an offshoot of, like, comic book, and so I, it still has that feeling to me, but I, I think I know what you're saying. It's it's not Spider-Man running around in spandex and bright and goofy and fun. It's, well, e even, no, even with, like, it's the Dark no, Knight, I yeah. mean, it's still a superhero going around being a superhero. And but it's this, low, he's low tech. He's low tech and low key. He's... He has some superpowers, but he's really just some guy in a black mask. No, and the crime, no fighting, or... the crime fighting is not the focus, which, yeah. like I said, and I'm not saying that's bad. It's it's an interesting take because that usually is the fact. That's what you go to see when you see a, a comic book uh, show or movie. Well, I, I was joking online that the, the funny thing about this show, because I also have seen a few episodes of The Flash, which I think is also really awesome. Um, so both DC and Marvel are on their game. <laughs> like, um, but the funny thing is when I was watching it, and some of it is the nature of the character of the Flash and Daredevil. Some say Daredevil is Marvel's answer to Batman, and like, to a certain degree. But like, when I watch the way each show is set up, it makes me laugh because I'm like, Marvel has given me the Batman I've kind of always wanted. <laughs> <laughs> At least out of like the films, like both the Nolan and the and the Burton. I do like the Burton films with them. I feel like somehow this is closer to the Batman, the dark, gritty, old school '30s and noir Batman. You know, kind of like yeah. And the Flash, meanwhile, is kind of giving me the Spider Man I always wanted. Mm -hmm. And they're both the opposite companies doing it. It's Marvel's Daredevil and DC's The Flash, but I'm like, DC's giving me a better Spider Man on the one side with the Flash, and Marvel's giving me the better Batman. You know, with this, so it's just kind of funny, but. It, Hey, more power to them. Like, I'm glad that both of them are churning out really good products in TV, even if it's in Bizarro World. The one thing... Well, well, first of all, we were talking about the uh, graphic novel and stuff like that, uh, and whether or not it's kind of a comic book show. Um, after this episode, I mean, can you see, like, that line about the Avengers? And yeah, they punch him through buildings. I mean, can... I can't connect this world to Avengers. I, I just can't. Um, you know, I, I love it. I think it's great. But I'm looking at this like, no, no, no. This was not the same place where Loki came through and, you know, the Hulk took him and smashed down. I'm like, this is a totally different creature. So I do think it's a little odd that it's supposed to take place in that same environment. That's not to say those movies can't have dark moments, but this Honestly, is... Honestly, I can see it. I the, the problem is the styles of the filmmaking are so different. The Avengers is definitely very... I wouldn't even argue a little bit of the tone. I mean, it does... Witty, and the, they definitely and the tone. Have some dark, they, they can yeah. get some dark tones, but I mean, this is like... like I mean, I, the, tone, the tone of this is dark, but this is also... How do you put this? Like, the Avengers... I don't want to say Avengers versus Agents of Shield because I'm not a, wasn't a giant fan of early Agents of Shield, but this is kind of like the Avengers level heroes versus. I mean, Daredevil. He's Murdoch's working from the ground up. He's literally the pond scum on the bottom, like working in the pond scum on the bottom here. Compared with the Avengers who are fighting the gods and this and that, like he's just fighting criminal scum. I guess it's like, kind of like, uh, it, it's kind of like, let's say the Keaton Batman or the Chris or Reed Superman. Like, everyone's yeah. like, what how are, those, how are yeah. those connected? And they mentioned like Metropolis once or twice and it's like, well, I just can't see. It, it's like, you kind of just got to accept it. Mm. Like in this universe, apparently there is a room for a Gotham and a Metropolis. And a yeah, Batman I guess I wasn't saying like a huge major problem, but it, it is, you know, tone wise, it's like, that is a little odd. That is a little jarring. Um, no. it, is, <laughs> it is totally different. Like, but in the same way I love Avengers for the lightheartedness and goofiness, God, I love this for the grittiness. <laughs> like that. You know, the one, the one thing I, I have to be honest, I didn't know about, I, you know, it's one thing you punch the guy and, you know, and we've seen the heroes like whatever, do bad things to bad guys and stuff like that. There really is something about taking that knife and putting it, whatever, above his eyebrow or his eye, whatever that was. Try jamming on her! <laughs> I mean, I was just like, Ugh. 
I mean, I and I'm sure they'll give, like, whatever, a reason why he does that, like, even more, and just more of a backstory. Yet. But I, I was I just, like... into the philosophy, but, I mean, I think you what you saw is what you got. He's like, I want to find out where this kid is, and I'm willing to torture this guy to do it. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not saying I'm right. I'm saying I don't know about that. That's the one scene where I was like, I don't know, did that... Did that maybe go too far? I, I'm not sure. <laughs> it just um, pushes him off. No, well, and I, I can't explain. Well, even that I predict. I'm like, eh, push him, and he pushes him. You know, I mean, Daredevil throws the guy. Daredevil was his always darker. Stuff. But yeah, no, there's something um, but, about just. Uh, that is but such I mean, a that graphic. is that is like very old school. Batman dark, like, yeah, I don't really care if this guy dies. Like, I, I, I know really seen, dark. You no, know, there's, it's like, I've seen Batman punch people, and so I have even seen him fucking carry a gun, but I've never seen him cut a guy. There's well, no, I'm talking, just cutting about, cutting I, I'm talking like original, so original Batman, where like, he really was like a crazed Frickin' vigilante uh, who was, you know, like one step removed from a fascist. It's like, I'm gonna fucking do what I want. Like, that early, like, first year kind of Batman. Like, I'm not talking about the Nolan Batman who's like, well, I'll yeah. drop a guy from one story and if he breaks his ankles, oh well. You know, you know what no, it is? I'm talking I about think... the Batman that killed people. <laughs> you know what it is? And again, this could be playing to its strength, not really its weakness, uh, is that that character is so, again, is so charming and likable and, and, you know, seems so caring and loving you want to be with this guy, that when he does something like that, it is really jarring, but you could make it's the argument the that's, yeah, that's the duality of the character. Um, Besides, he's Catholic. He can go confess it, tell himself off, and then do it again. <laughs> the, there's something, I, I don't know, like I said, when you bring a knife in, I, I don't know why, that seems like a point where it's like, that just gets, like, maybe keep, a little too sick. Keep this in mind! Who gave him the advice? Oh, she was pretty The nurse too. did, which I thought was badass, too. It's like, I'm going to use my medical advice to hurt somebody. See, I, mean, I thought it was that, more like he was going to skin with them oh, and no. he was finally that going is, to break. But no, he like he fucking got them. That is a the clear violation of her oath. You know, above all else, do no harm and, and stab him right above the eye there. Yeah, um, but I mean... But yeah, but again, you could see how they got there. He keeps trying and he's getting nothing. And you could see almost feel her disgust and reaction at what he's saying, like, I ah, will sell the kid, I ah, will kill the kid, ah, who cares, like, this and that, and finally she's like, you know what, I'm gonna do it, this kid's gonna die if we don't get this information. Like, she goes through the same process in her own head, and that's Yeah, I mean, and, and don't get me wrong, that's a, if there is a reason to do that, I mean, that that's a legit reason, um, but it's... I don't know. Maybe it's just like a weird knife thing I have, but I really felt that might have been pushing it a little bit. I'm, I, I'm totally not oh, no, saying I, I'm right. Oh no, when I saw it, I I flinched. Like I was like, <gasps> no, no, and, and, I, and that, I saw yeah. him. Sti I saw the kid stitching up his father earlier. Yeah, no, I know. That, that didn't bother me at all. But that scene, like uh, the the performance helps too, because that guy is like giving it his all. Just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, so, so I, I don't know. I'm not claiming it, why does that work and not, you know, whatever, Batman breaking a guy's ankles when he throws him off a building or all these other things. I don't know, but it is something where it's like, I'd be laying well, myself. I, mean, uh, uh, I don't know. That, that might have been it, just it a works, little It much. works in Dark Knight. I just feel that it's always glossed over, though. Like, and he breaks a guy's ankles and gets him rigid, boom, like, walks in. Like, I, there's no dwelling on it. Like... <laughs> This one just dwells on it, like, oh no, we're not going to shy away from this. This but, isn't just going to be a quick, like, you're going to see what this guy is going to do to get what he wants. But, uh, but again, when you go from something like that where the violence is very, you know, pretty gruesome, I mean, even if it's not super gory, it's pretty gruesome, uh, to that fight at the end where it's like, yeah, you see him sort of do these flips and jump off of stuff, but it all looks doable. It does not look too comic bookish, and it's still, like I said, it sounds like it's really... It, they're really hitting each other, and, and, okay, yeah, let's talk about that fight scene, because this is one of the few fights, and I love it, this is another thing I realize they're really missing in some of these action films, they're missing the tired, they're missing the breathing. Well, that's what makes that scene, is um, those scenes where Daredevil kind of starts of to collapse, and yeah, the other okay. guys are just like, there's a wonderful scene where they all get up almost simultaneously, like, yeah, alright, alright, give me... Okay, let's Here do this. So, yeah. like, no, and, they, like, and you could see, you could see Murdoch kind of following their lead, almost like, I'm not gonna get up first, you get up first. Like, they're all, like, waiting for each other to get up, like, because if I could... Let's wait and see what the other's gonna do. Well, yeah, because, like, if I could, it's that, that, I don't want to say laziness, but just that I'm in the middle of a fight and, like, I'm tired. Like, if I can get another second or two to relax, yeah, I'll just to it. get my And they're all taking yeah. that and slowly getting up, like, ugh, like, you get up first, no, you get up first. All right, we're getting up. Guess we're doing this again. Like, it's... 
Oh, it's so You know, it, you, you see them all really straight. Daredevil, you know the whole episode is dedicated to describing his wounds. So when he goes in there and he's really you know. hurt, you know exactly where and how he's Speaking hurt. Speaking of knowing the setup for that whole scene of taking the one camera, and the, there's a number of tricks. There's no way it's all one yeah, shot. Yeah, they definitely like, uh, going, switch up the, the stuff. Then, yeah, too. going, but taking that one shot, suppo what's supposed to look like one shot, and going through and giving you the entire layout how many guys? How are many there? guys? In what where room? the kid is? You know where these guys are going and how it's set up, and then flipping around to show you where Daredevil's coming in from, and then flipping around again. So it's like you know the geography, and then just letting the camera sit still and only moving slightly during a few scenes, and just letting the fun unfold. <laughs> the, the, here, here's the one thing I just now realized. Okay, so I'm assuming there's a guard or a couple guys or something. At the front door, because, oh, why would he just walk in and make it? So mm -hmm. you assume he took those guys out. All right, so he took those guys out. Now, those guys would have phoned or something, and he obviously took them out, and they didn't know. They go in their rooms. What's the stop, Daredevil? He goes in, he hears these guys in these rooms, and maybe he just waits to say he knows they're not coming out or something. He's just like, okay. He just goes to the kid, grabs the kid, runs the hell out of there. <laughs> why did he have to fight those two rooms of guys? <laughs> well, what if... One of them got up and came to the kid or saw him or something. Maybe yeah, well, I mean, camp. he's going to carry, he's gonna carry and... a kid out, and if one of the guards sees this unfolding, is that when Daredevil just goes, Oh, jeez! Well, no, no, and you can say, this too, kid like, and just running away. You can say, too, if he get caught in the room with the kid, he, he is cornered. He can, he yeah. has no wiggle room. Uh, well, but, I, thought, uh, I think he thought, too, that he can get the jump on them and surprise them, and he kind of did. Yeah. He's um, able to toss a TV at one of them. That was my favorite, the TV that hits the guy. Yeah, guy looks over, <laughs> pong! It falls down. Oh, God, um, what a fight. But, you know, and the, the importance, I mean, really, I mean, the importance of showing when a character is tired and drained and everybody is and stuff is it shows the strength of the hero. It shows the strength of, okay, he's really tired, he's really hurt, but you know, he's gonna get up and keep going. Not only uh, that, but one of the things I love about this show, and we'll keep coming back, is, is juxtaposition mm -hmm. of showing one side versus another and how they affect each other. And in this case, showing his whole backstory and his connection with his father is what almost kind of informs everything he's doing in the present with saving this kid. Mm -hmm. Like, you could feel the loss of his father, and you can tell that there was something about this abduction, because he's chasing after this kid since the end of episode one. Mm -hmm. There was something about this abduction in particular that really is getting to him. That's Yeah, he doesn't know the yeah, kid. Any yeah, other it's all bugging, movie yeah. know the kid. Yeah, it's bugging him on a deep personal level. Like, he took this one personally, and I think it's that. And the way... Th his final words to his dad were, Daddy, Daddy, and the way it keeps cutting back to the other kid who also says daddy, they're like juxtaposing these two things. Like, it reminds him of something of that that he's lost, and therefore he's like, I'm gonna fix this. Mm. You know, and it's something the show does like the whole way through. Things that happened in the past inform the present. And I just love it. Like, it worked well in this episode. It'll work well in future Well, that was episodes. something in the last episode I actually forgot to mention when, you know, he, he's down on the ground as Daredevil. He's beat up and he's still like, this guy's coming to kill him or whatever. And he, he we cut to that flashback and... Just when he says, I mean, it doesn't directly, I don't even know if it does directly impact it, but just when he says, now get to work, and he steps up, it's like, yeah. I don't know, like, that really connected, even if I don't even know the whole, I'd have to see it again, but the whole scene, the whole flashback, did just him saying, now get to work with him standing up, it's like, How many it really times connected. have we seen comic book movies where there's flashbacks that, they just feel arbitrary, like, and there's a flashback, just to have a flashback. Like, they don't really connect to anything. Like, I'm you not... want them to connect somehow to the rest of the movie, but it just feels like, oh, we wanted to give some character development, we don't know where to fit it, so just throw it here. Another great edit that actually, again, that, and this triggered, doesn't a do that. That, that triggered a flashback is when he says there's a guy going door to door, he's this really strong cologne, he's going to come to the door, and there's some things you don't know about me, blah, 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 and then you hear boom, 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 and it turns out it's the punching. I was like, yeah. oh, I thought that was the knocking of the door. It is the knocking of the door as well, because when it comes back, they're answering the door, you know, yeah. NYPD, come on, open up, so it's like, that triggered the the flashback, you know, and as well as everything that's going on with the kid, it reminds him back of his, you know, childhood and everything, so there is a connection, um, and yeah, I think the, the last thing I probably have on this is, again, just going back to the characters when they, you show how strong they are in, in their weakest moments, and that includes physically, 
I think, I'm sure there's other movies where I've seen it, but the the two that jump out the most to me is is actually Batman, which I know is kind of weird, but when he's getting his ass kicked by that guy before he goes after the Joker, it's just sort of, you know, he's legitimately having trouble, he's getting blood out of I just remember as a kid, I'm like, what, well, Batman can't bleed? We have no, he, Batman, fight Batman, fight Batman, fight Batman, and I just got so invested. Cause I always like the bit, too, where he comes out of the bat plane after it's destroyed and blows the smoke out of yeah. his mouth. <laughs> like that, too, like, whew. You know, there's something about, like, you know, you get much more invested when it kind of looks like what they can lose. And they can lose in a way you can quickly understand. And the the first one that always jumps in my head, and I think the movie is really applied for that, was in Raiders of the Lost Ark. God, when Harrison Ford is fighting. Oh, yeah. I mean, and like... He that, always looks like he's on the cusp of losing. Like, he ba always just barely scrapes out a yeah, win, which is Yeah, and he looks fun tired, that, you know, yeah. when, when... In most... Well, the, the, the tall, the, the German pilot, he's like... All right, all yeah, right. yeah. The bald guy, <laughs> come here, come here, and just yeah. and he is so tired. So I said, like, yeah, all right, all right, yeah, then, and then it fakes just, him out. Oh, <laughs> just go. But no, my favorite, I mean, is when he he gets shot in the arm in Raiders of the Lost Ark, and the one the Nazis see, and he punches him in the arm. Oh, my you God, feel that. yeah, he is just. I mean, he's even going after him, he punches. He just goes, wow, and like that. So you fucking feel yeah. that hurt, and then you admire him even more when he can come out of it and he can pull it together. Yeah, every blow it's the same in thing this here. show, you just feel. You it. really do, and that is so rare. And it's you know, on the one hand, it's kind of cringeworthy because you're like, oh. Uh, but you're so invested and you feel so and cool when he gets him back. It's something I didn't feel I didn't feel it in uh, Man of Steel. I don't really feel it in Avengers and most is the Spider-Man's most comic book movies. I don't feel any of the blows and like I'm sure some of that's on purpose because they're meant to be fair. Yeah, they're, friendly, they're, but... they're showing the stunts and the kind of, but you're but right. But it's nice to finally get it. one like that's dark and gritty enough to be like, no, nah, you're gonna feel every freaking thing thud of like flesh against bone and you know yeah no it's nice to kind of splattered everywhere it's nice to be reminded that this stuff i mean there's a reason we find this stuff exciting is that if it did happen in real life it would be really well, chilling you know well, well there's that and it makes sense too because in it basically at its core it's about boxing yeah <laughs> <laughs> like, well there, there was a I, i'm forgetting the name of it now but there's a kevin costner movie where uh he said you know whenever somebody sh a western he said where he shot when somebody would shoot a gun he wanted people to react like somebody shot a gun 510 to you no 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 it, it, it was a it was, it was a western it actually wasn't that good but it looked gorgeous uh I'm trying I want to say, like, Open was. West or something like that. Oh, uh, You know what yeah. I'm talking about? Yeah, um, I know, I actually exactly. And it wasn't that. terrible, but it wasn't that great. But but every time somebody fired a gun, the room would go quiet and the gunshot echoed. You know, and it's like, everyone, it's like, you felt like, holy shit, somebody just took exactly what this is, a machine that can project a small little bullet across so fast it can go through you and kill you, and it lets out a sound like thunder... And every time it happened, you felt it, and the room went quiet, and it just sent chills every time. It's the same thing here when somebody is punched. You hear that sound, and you feel it, and it just feels yeah. so legit, and it just gets you so much more invested. Another good one, actually, you just flashed to it, is uh, that did something similar. Hunt for Red October, when he blows the uh, KGB agent at the end. Mm. There's, like, this kind of gust of wind, and, it's and just... Yeah, yeah it's just the <laughs> right amount of slow mo that every impact you kind of feel like it just it, it just resonates and yeah. yeah, I don't I don't see that in a lot of comic books. And, no, I, and I get what honestly, uh, I shouldn't even say comic book movies as if it's only movies that. in general action yeah. movies. And that's like where the old '80s films, like sorry, millennials were old, but that's where I think the '80s films, like and the '70s films, like really nailed it. Like somehow we sanitized it. Like, violence has to be sanitized. Now, when you watch those 80 films, it's like, you feel the violence. Like, it it feels like a punch in the gut. Whereas PG-13 films nowadays, it just, it's too clean. And well, no, but, but here's the thing. I, I know why we did that, and I'm not entirely against it, is because just punching people got boring. And now we want to do, we got the the Matrix and the Crouching Tiger Hinge Man, we got the martial arts, which is beautiful and incredible and, you know, amazing to see. Uh, so that it suddenly became much more showy and flashy, and for comic book movies, that's great, and for action films, that's great, but yes, we started to lose the actual investment of when somebody punches someone, it hurts, you know, and it's gonna hurt like it should properly hurt, and that sucks you in once again to the reality of the situation. It doesn't have to be real, but you have to have a reality to that environment. 
Uh, and I think it sucks you in much more when you feel every single hit that's done. So this yeah. is a good combination that there are stunts. There is flipping and jumping off of walls and stuff, throwing TVs and everything, but you still feel the impact every single time. And it's a really good Tell combo. me if you hit the trigeminal nerve. Yes. <laughs> um, I just want to talk one more time, just again, about the use of color and darkness and shadow in every episode. Um... The predominant color seems to be yellow and orange, and I love it because they're in Hell's Kitchen, and the whole thing is lit like it's fucking hell. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the bar has deep reds, the exteriors when they're on the roof are oranges, the interior of the apartments are yellow. Like, and anytime you're looking out the windows from their office or uh, from uh, Claire's apartment, it, yeah, it, it's always this deep orange-yellow, like they're in a constant purgatory or something. And uh, yellow's not an easy color to make look interesting, and mm. they really do it well in the show. Well, and when he's going down that alleyway in that, that long shot, the action scene, um, you know, I, I was really impressed by how one room is yellow, another room is green, another room is red. red yeah. You know, I, I was just missing a blue. That was the one thing my OCD is like, gosh, I've gotten a blue. Uh, but there's not a ton of blue. If I'm remembering the show right, I don't think The blue always seems to be during the day. Yeah. <laughs> during the day or sometimes some night shots. No, fluorescent light or yeah. something. There's not yeah, a ton of blue. deep blue. No, but that's hard to do. That's hard to get different colors yeah. in each room. You have to purposefully, like, really go out of your way to do that because you, you know, you change. But the, the, the uh, cinematographer style. and the, the the director of photography, the the lighting guys, I, it's just such an incredible job. There are just scenes where Rosario Dawson's just her face is just lit with a faint orange, and it's just her against black. It's just a, a dark set behind her, and it looks like a Rembrandt painting. Like, it looks like somebody painted it or drew it from like scratch. That. Yeah, <laughs> not, not like that. Not like <laughs> our crappy lighting. But, um, uh, you know, something you nailed, we were talking about sort of these grainy-looking uh, movies. I mean, even something like The New Avengers, uh, you know, as actually really good as it looks. Um, there's sort of this, they're upping the exposure and the graininess uh, to apparently make it darker. And honestly, Avengers isn't the best example. But, you know, by like Man of Steel, we picked out a lot, so I, I didn't want to bring that up. But but sort of that style that a lot of people are doing, and I think I know the reason. Man of Steel. It, it, I think so, just, it's the easy recent target. I'm trying to think of a bigger movie yeah. that did it. But, but something um, that, no, but there are other films that do this. Yeah, a lot but, of films. It's not just Man of Steel, it's just because we're talking about comic books, so it springs to mind instantly. But, yeah, but but a the lot shadows of them do this. The, the, the shadows in this and the black and the light and stuff are very clear. They're not grainy. Uh, you can clearly mark out where the outline is and where the light source is coming from and stuff, and you don't see that. And there's a, probably like what you're seeing now because our lights just. Working. There's a <laughs> respect for shadows too, which is something like I think people think that like to do a black and white film would be really easy. That somehow it's just like, oh yeah, well, you just, right. yeah you, the, well you just suck the color out of it and you turn it gray and like, no, all you've done is turned it gray. Like just taking something and making it black and white is not the same as shooting something as if it were meant to be in black and white. And this is shot almost like a black and white film. Mm -hmm. Like it is basically light, dark. And the use of shadows in this is just amazing. And this is what sets this apart from other comic book films that try to be gritty by, oh, it's going to be all gray, it's going to be all dark colors. And But instead, there's no differentiation between the light and the darkness, the, the shadow, the foreground, the background. And you just end up with just something that just looks like a flat gray mess. Well, I think just you nailed everything's it. gray. Whereas this, it is just as dark as night versus something in the foreground which has a brightness to it, you know, versus other scenes I see in other movies where it's just like, oh, here's a scene in a room at night, but everything's just kind of lit the same. There's no real shadows, there's no, but it's gray or blue or green tinted, therefore it's dark. No, it's not Well, I think you nailed it with, you know, it's not black and white, it's gray. You know, it, just because you suck out the color, have you ever actually tried to make something black and white, like solid black and solid white on film. It is trickier than it looks, but it is gorgeous when you get it right. Uh, so I think you're right. I think that by sucking out the color, they think they get black and white, but they don't. They get variations of gray. You know, sometimes you yeah. get a black, sometimes you get a white, but to have something mostly black and white is very tricky and takes great craftsmanship to do If so. you look at old 60s horror films like The Innocence or The Haunting, um, or even some of the classic Universal stuff, 
like, and look at how they're filmed. This is how it's done. Or even Sin City, honestly. Yeah, or even Sin right. City's a good, actually, Sin City's a good example, and this reminds me of Sin City. That's how it's done. Like, that's how you accomplish that effect. And they're doing it with color, and it's gorgeous, and I wish more movies would do it like this. Because you can have a movie that has deep, rich, saturated colors. A lot of the colors in this, it's not desaturated. They're, some of these are rich yellows, rich reds. And rich, but it still feels dark and gritty as fuck. It reminds me a lot of uh, the only other film, in my opinion, the, still its own unique thing, but uh, uh, Dick Tracy. It's kind of did it where, well, where it, yeah. it did this very extreme color, but this extreme dark shadows. You know, and you can clearly you know, outline the shadow very clearly. It wasn't... If you want to see how to bring a graphic novel to life, watch this show and take notes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you're in film school, take notes. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Good episode two. Can't wait for three. Oh, it gets good. So, we'll see you there.